Hi, in this video, we're going to introduce the IPv4 address and subnet mask. Okay, first of all, just remember that IP is used to forward packets from their original source to their final destination, either within its own network or across multiple networks. And that's the same for both IPv4 and IPv6. In this series of videos, we're going to be focusing on IPv4. Okay, so if you take a look here, uh, we have a two networks, our 192.168.1.0 network and our 10.10.0.0 network, each with something called a subnet mask. We'll be getting to all this in a moment. And you might even notice a relationship between the device's uh, IPv4 addresses and the subnet mask along uh, in their relationship with the network address. Okay, and we're going to be exploring this in this set of videos and in other videos as well. So let's get started here. So in IPv4, it's critical to understand that the device's IP address and subnet mask, these two items here, determine what IPv4 network it belongs to, what the network address is of its own network. Okay, and we're going to see how this happens, how, uh, how this device uh, uh, figures out what network it's on in later videos. Also notice there's a address of the router, the local default gateway. Let's go back to that. Let's take a look at our topology again. And you will see in this topology, in this topology here, I've included the default gateway address, which is that of the local router. And we'll, we'll be talking more about this later. Okay. But again, uh, notice the relationship here of the device's IPv4 address and its network address. We'll be talking about how this relationship is formed a little bit in this video and more in later videos. Okay, so let's get started. An IPv4 address is written in dotted decimal notation, but it actually is a 32-bit address, which gives us a total address space of about 4.29 4.29 billion addresses. So what we do though, is we take that 32-bit address, this here, and we divide it into four 8-bit octets. And then we take each eight bits and convert that into binary. And this is what is called dotted decimal notation. And that's how we write IPv4 addresses. You'll see in IPv6, we actually write it in hexadecimal notation. That might seem, that's base 16, that might seem a little scary, but it's actually easier than looking at it in decimal notation. We'll get to that a little later here. All right, so. Okay, so the theoretical range of an IPv4 address could be from four zeros in dotted decimal notation to four, 255, 255, 255, 255. Sometimes we say quad zero or in quad 255. All right, so the IPv4 address in the subnet mask, let's talk about this. An IPv4 address is divided into two parts, a network portion and a host portion. It's the subnet mask, this is key, it's the subnet mask, also known as the prefix length, that determines what part of the IPv4 address belongs to the network and what part belongs to the host. So it's used to divide the network portion up from the host portion. And it does that using a 32-bit subnet mask. So the subnet mask is 32 bits, just like an IPv4 address. It's a contiguous set of all one bits followed by a contiguous set of all zero bits. So once the ones turn to a zero, the rest have to be all zeros. The ones indicate the network portion of the address and the zeros indicate the host portion. And this will become more evident to you in the following videos. 
when we look at all these kinds of addresses and their subnet masks and we do some really cool things. Okay, so how do we write a subnet mask? Remember, we use dotted decimal, dotted decimal notation for the IPv4 address. So we can use the same dotted decimal notation for the subnet mask. For example, uh, 255, 25500. We divide those 32 bits up into four 8 bit octets and then we convert the each octet. Let me kind of show you what's going on here. So we divide the 32 bits up into four 8 bit octets, right? Just like we did the IPv4 address and then convert each one into decimal. Okay. We can also do what's known as slash notation. So what is slash notation? Slash notation, also known as the prefix length, is a number like slash 16 in this case. It's just the number of one bits, 16 of them in this case. And that's commonly how we tend to write IPv4 uh, subnet masks nowadays is using the prefix length or slash notation. By the way, that's how we do it, the only way we do it for IPv6. Okay, uh, so I had mentioned previously that it was the IP address and subnet mask that determines the network address. So as you notice here, we're going to see this in later videos, but notice that every device on this network First of all, they all have the same subnet mask, the same subnet mask as the network subnet mask. You'll also notice that the network portion of each address is the same. In this case, 192.168.1. Okay. What's different about each one is the host portion of the address that is unique. Whoops, that's a network address, sorry. There we go. That is unique. This is the network portion here, I'm showing a network address down here. Uh, so network, okay, there we go, host portion. And here's the host portion there, okay. And this will become more evident to you as we look at later videos. Okay, so how do we connect networks? So just kind of getting this idea of the IPv4 address, subnet mask, network, and network addresses. We'll talk more about network addresses here in the next video. Uh, but routers are used to connect networks. So here we have router R1 that belongs to the 10100 network. And I've, I'm showing it both the subnet mask in slash notation and dotted decimal. Okay, and routers actually have a host address, we'll talk more about that in a late, later video, but the router has an interface that belongs to that network. It's usually the, and that's usually what the default gateway address is for the hosts on that network. So the router R1 connects also to this 192.168.1.0 network slash 24 and has an address that belongs to that network. Okay, it also belongs to this network and has an address associated with it, belongs to this network, has an address associated with this, belongs to a network that connects both routers R1 and R2, okay? And R1 has, a has an address that belongs to that network and so does R2, that's how they communicate with each other. So this will give you kind of a bigger picture of all these different IPv4 networks, their subnet masks, and how routers are used to interconnect these various networks. We'll look at all this in more detail in later videos. Okay. So remember, by the way, the routers have routing tables that actually tell them what networks they're directly connected to and also what networks they're remotely connected to. Okay. So router R1's routing table, here we're just showing the remote networks. It's saying, R1 says, I can reach these two remote networks, these two net remote networks here, and I get there by sending those packets to the next hop of this router here. 
the 192.168.99.2. Router R2 has a routing table that shows two remote networks, this network here and this network here, and it sends packets to the next hop IP address of router R1. All right, we'll be exploring all this in more detail in later videos, but I just, again, I just wanted to give you kind of the big picture here at the beginning. All right, hope this helped you understand a little bit about IPv4 addresses and subnet masks. A lot more to come, so stay tuned and watch the, 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 the following videos as well. <laughs>